Morning Seattle. In today's news, the mayor's office yesterday unveiled an innovative plan designed to streamline and improve the quality of services offered by the city's utilities and the Seattle Police Department. Over the past six years, Seattle has taken enormous strides to make government more efficient and more responsive to the people we serve. We've cut the real growth of in city spending by over 90 percent. We've consolidated or eliminated nearly a dozen city offices and departments, and we've rewarded our employees for their cost-saving ideas, and we've made major gains in customer service. The efficiencies we have achieved since 1990 will serve us well in the months ahead. Thanks to the difficult choices we have made over the past six years, we are in much better position today to respond to the federal and state cutbacks. But now we need to take our efforts to an even higher level. We must become even more efficient. We must continue our efforts to find new ways of doing business and new ways of providing vital services. We cannot afford to adopt a wait-and-see attitude. We must plan ahead now. So as we approach the 21st century, I have three predictions. First, I predict that local government is going to be the place where innovation and problem solving occur in America. I predict that local government is going to be the hotbed of creativity as our nation struggles to find its way in a world of accelerating change and new challenges. And most important, I predict that Seattle will be at the forefront of the innovations that can ensure that our nation prospers and our people succeed in years to come. Listeners, let me ask you this. I've lived all over the country in big cities, small communities, and since moving here, I just keep wondering, what makes Seattle work? You think about that. In other news today, an event which has stunned the world, the word espresso does not have an X in it. Film at 11. Now for some music to get you going. Good morning, Steve. How are you? Great. Did you hear the news this morning? Well, you know, I heard pieces, and it reminded me of when Seattle Center opened the key arena. What a job that was. We had a million concerns. You know what? That news story reminded me of an experience I had with the Employee Involvement Committee at City Life. We had one, EIC, you know, that developed a process for an inventory system. We were able to eliminate about 300 stock items, saving hundreds of thousands of dollars. Wow, that's great. Yeah, and we had fewer items to inventory, and we even got money back by reselling some of those materials. Very impressive, Steve. Yeah. Jim Rich had the idea for our EIC, but we developed and implemented it. Some other changes we proposed will even make us more efficient. It feels great to have worked on something that really makes a difference. EICs can be really successful. They need to include participation from all affected areas, and the people that participate need to be volunteers. Uh, being a volunteer indicates that, that you've got the energy and commitment for the project. Sounds like the committee worked hard. We sure did. Well, Steve, I'd still like to tell you about the Key Arena project, but here's Roy. Uh, hey, good morning, you two. Morning. What's up? morning. Well, Steve was telling me about a successful EIC process at City Life. It ended up reducing lots of inventory and saving a lot of money. Hmm, we've had our own quite success stories. So there was hmm. uh, anti ticket writers we might have heard of. They've really increased our efficiency. Of course, no one likes to get a parking ticket. Tell, Tell me, me about, about it. it. Well, the ticket writers are called HHCs. They're actually mini computers that can download information to a PC and from there to the Municode's mainframe computer. So it's quicker? Well, not only quicker, but simple, easy to use, and very reliable. More tickets get written, parking meters get repaired faster. In fact, it is almost indestructible. A truck could run over the unit and it would still retain its memory. We can even identify stolen cars immediately. Wow, that's cool. 
Uh, here's customer service Carla. Uh-oh. Have I been talking about customer service too much? You can never talk too much about customer service. Thank you. I sure like going to my job where I can really help to make Seattle work. Speaking of making things work. We've been talking about how we've broken out of the government service stereotype. Well, I was talking about the police department's uh, automatic ticket writer story. And I still want to tell all of you about the Kirina project. But Carla, did you have something you want to say first? Yeah, I was really excited about a meeting that I attended last night. The Parks Department put it on, and they just did a fabulous job. I love it when we do a good job of communicating and collaborating with folks. Good morning, Carla. How was it at the Neighborhood Service Center this morning? Well, thanks, Lonnie. Hi, it's fine. You know, people really like this new format for the City Light brochures. Can you read me some extras? Sure can. But you know the reason why they like them now? There's more specific information on the services on these new brochures versus a generalized customer service number on the old ones. Well, that explains it. Yeah. We will also be utilizing these for the All City Festival this year. Great. We had such a good time at that last year. I am so glad you're coordinating an effort where all departments are working together. Well, you know, I think the city really wants to see the city departments working together. Yeah, I think so, too. Have you seen the new remote automated payment system where City Light and Water and the neighborhoods are all working together for taking in utility payments? I've heard about it, Carla, but could you tell me a little about it? Well, the main thing is, is that the, what the neighbors like is that their payments are posted the same day. Fantastic. That is great customer service. It sure is, and that's what makes it all work. problem I'm hoping you can help me with. Oh, sorry. Well, my staff and I are looking for a facilitator to lead a retreat we're planning. We'd like to find someone in help. Any suggestions? Maybe Nova can help you. Both Carla and I were in the first Nova program. What's Nova? Nova is a training program for city employees. It's also skills and experience of how to facilitate group meetings. Three years ago, uh, during the innovation project, one of the things that we noticed in uh, terms of trying to make efficiency and effectiveness in, in improvements was that the groups that were trying to do these things did not have good facilitation skills. And there were some things that should have taken uh, a couple of weeks that actually took 10 months to do because people didn't understand how to facilitate a meeting. They didn't understand how to create an environment that got the best out of the people in the room, that got the most aliveness out of the room, that got the, the greatest contribution out of the room. So we thought that we needed uh, uh, to, to, to have some facilitators to help us in the, uh, the conscious process of, of the evolution of our organization. So the other thing that we notice in going to these meetings is that uh, it, it appeared that employees had been disconnected from their creativity, that somehow employees were capable of making small workflow process improvements, but they weren't capable of making the quantum jumps into things that were innovative and different and new and exciting. So we also thought we, we needed to have creativity training. Uh, the other thing we looked at was that there, there was kind of a dearth of leadership. And I don't mean in terms of authority. I mean in terms of each individual employee taking responsibility from where they are to impact the organization as best they could, that there was a problem with that. And we wanted to do leadership training uh, that didn't have anything to do with the relationship of authority and leadership, but that had to do with 10,000 employees as leaders. So we were going to do three different kinds of training. And in the course of a conversation, uh, and, and I think it was Chris Coy who said this, why do all three of these trainings, why not put them all together and prepare a group of people to be able to function in almost any circumstance? That is, any challenge that the organization offered, we would have 30 or 35 people we could assign to the process who we knew understood the organizational value, who we knew understood creativity and change, who we knew understood community building, so that we could trust that that process would be facilitated properly. Um, and that's how the idea for NOVA was born. Bonnie Snedeker oversees the NOVA program. You really should give her a call. I'm sure that she can help you with finding someone for facilitation. That's what we were looking for. Thanks. You're welcome.
Well, we've been trading such a stories about work, Stephanie. Do you have any you want to share with us? Well, yeah, Kat, in fact, I do. You know how there's been a lot of talk about government services being more competitive? Well, last summer, while City Light was preparing to move 1,200 people into Key Tower, they issued an RFP for the phone service. I'm proud to say that GAS won the first contract by producing the best proposal at the lowest cost. Yeah, that's great. Then we had to install the phone system on a very tight schedule, but we did it. Cool. It felt great working so closely with City Light and having the move coordinated so well. Plus, we were proud to have the opportunity to display the quality of our work on such an important project. When we competed against U.S. West and Electric Lightwave, it was one of the first opportunities for city workers to compete against private contractors. Uh, in this instance, we were able to beat one competitor by more than a two-to-one margin and another uh, by a substantial amount uh, as well. So it was, I think, a very good deal for the city and a very good deal for uh, the citizens. Oh, we're here already? Yeah. Hey, you all have a great day. Keep trying. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Bye, Steve. Steve. Nice, Steve. Nice, Steve. See ya. Well, good night. Oh, at least the weather's cooperating today. Yep, it is. <laughs> Here you are, Sandy. You never got a chance to finish telling me about the key arena, did you? Well, everyone else is so excited to talk about their own project. Yeah, I noticed. The Seattle Center staff worked with the clients, the architects, the contractors, to do the renovation of the key arena. The reason this project was such a success was we had to keep the Sonics in the city, and the key arena construction was the best way we could think of doing that. It was nice that Seattle Center's the technical staff had the uh, ability to have input and in design in the planning. We put together several teams, including the architect, the contractors, the clients, and the employees to provide direct input into the process. Yeah, it was great being part of the whole project. It sure helped us operationally. You're right. That'll help us to get to Virginia's dream of being the most preeminent gathering place in the Northwest. Yeah, and the design of this building makes it pretty easy for us to change over from basketball games to hockey games. You know, even the financial package for this building was unique. It was a partnership between the city and the um, Sonics without using any additional taxpayer money. Without employee involvement, we never could have finished this project on time and on budget. And more importantly, because of employee involvement, this building really works. Continue to look the Pistons fans just if you can get an easy shot, you go for it. Douglas to Gary, back to Dent, right side, out high, skips low to Sam, guns a diagonal pass to Pace, up fake Stockton, drives five, sets his feet, knocks off the little five foot hopper up and in. Gary, whoa, that team works. And so does ours. See you later, Steve. See you later, Steve.